Check, check, one, two, check, one, two. Are you good? Chris? You got something? Check, check, one, two.
Well, good afternoon, Scots Nation and fans of USA South Athletic Conference football. Welcome to today's live video broadcast of the Tornadoes of Brevard College from Brevard, North Carolina, and today's host, the Scots of Maryville College. I'm Heath Dunkel alongside Scott Dunkel, and we are excited to be bringing you Maryville College football on the Scots Broadcasting Network. Scott, as I mentioned a moment ago, the Tornadoes of Brevard College coming into today's game are going to be a tough opponent for the Scots here in their first home game of the year. Yes, they are, Heath. They're coming off a big win two weeks ago for over Huntington College, 27-3. to Got a little bit of a rest to lick their wounds a little bit last week as they come in as Coach Bill Kayat's team comes in with a one-in-one -one conference record um, as they have and a two-in-one overall as um, they have split with Huntington this year. This is the first meeting with Maribel as Coach Kayat, a, um, basically about his third year, with the um, Tornadoes coming in with a 16 and 14 record, one in 0 in postseason. Um, coach Kayat, a really good coach, has brought a team that basically had not had a winning season in about 10 years at Brevard. Oh, wow! And uh, brought them up in last or in 19, 2019, which I guess kind of was last year. <laughs> um, had an 8 and 2 record, second place finish. So a really good season. He had a lot of um, good coaching experience through um, help with his family, his dad, and his brother both. He also coached with the Arizona Cardinals and also with Washington in the NFL. So a good background, a graduate of the University of Duke. Yeah, a lot of great coaching experience and certainly someone you'd be interested in playing for. But, Scott, another coach you'd be interested in playing for is head coach Ben Fox of the Maribel College Scots. His in his first season. His dad, Mark Fox, was a, a vice president for student development and athletics at Milligan College. Learned a lot from his dad about what it's like at the college level and some of the things you have to take into consideration on and off the football field. And Ben has certainly done a tremendous job. But looking a little bit about his history, you know, he was a uh, former quarterback at Daniel Boone High School. Then went on to Washington University in St. Louis, where he was a four-year letterman as a quarterback and as a defensive back. So played both sides of the football. That's pretty impressive when you think about it at the collegiate level. After college, went on to the coaching staff at Bryant University for three seasons, then became the wide receiver coach at Huntington College, and eventually became the offensive coordinator there, and most recently served as the offensive coordinator at Center College for the past few seasons before taking over the head coaching job this year. Uh, it was about a week coaching search for Merrill College, Scott, to, to find the right man, but I think they've certainly done that in head coach Ben Fox as Maribel comes into this game one and one on the season. They lost last week to Huntington 16 to 13, a very tough battle between these two schools. But they're going to continue to learn. They're going to continue to develop. And, and really, you think about it, and Coach Fox talked about it, Scott is kind of in unprecedented times. This is something that they haven't done before. It's hard to ask other people how you adjust to this because you're playing football in the spring. You're playing a limited schedule, so it's almost like you just have an extended spring practice. Exactly, Heath, and that's um, kind of about what I think this is going to be getting to know the team, the team getting to know Coach Fox as well, mm -hmm. and also preparing for the fall part of 2021. Absolutely, and you have to imagine with the ability for a lot of these seniors you know, to potentially come back next year, Coach Fox is going to get a really good look at what he's got, and then hopefully next fall you'll also have a few more freshmen on the lineup as well. But he talked about it. This team is a younger team. Um, only had 20 juniors and seniors on the roster that he took over just a few months ago. And so he's had to learn quick. His team's had to learn quick and continue to develop. But he has done a phenomenal job so far, and we're excited to see the game today. And uh, they just had the coin toss a moment ago. ago. Brevard will receive. So we're getting ready to do that in just a moment. Scott's 
back to receive. That will be number 17, Jamiriel Parks. Parks has it. Good, nice little kickoff return there, and he breaks one tackle, trying to escape another shoestring tackle, but they hold on to him, and the rest of the Maribel College defense meets him there and brings him down, and that is where Brevard will start off on offense. Yeah, he, uh, Demario Parks, a 6 foot 180 senior out of Carnes High School in Knoxville. Local product, so you have to imagine he might have some a fan or two here getting a look at him or some friends and family trying to watch on, on television today as we do have limited seating and capacity due to COVID. So we hope they'll be able to, to watch him play. And that's a, that's a pretty cool experience for him to kind of be back home. Oh, uh, yes. So Brevard will start. Looks like they're in the shotgun formation. And they'll turn and get it out of the hands quickly of quarterback Eli Carr. And he'll turn and get it out to number five. That is Cedric Brooks and a good play that time by Brooks getting to the outside and picking up very close to a first down. Looks like about a yard, yard and a half away on that. It's a very quick pass. Maribel's going to have to watch those corners. Yeah, Eli Carr, Scott for Brevard, a freshman, 6'1", 225 pounds from Asheville, North Carolina. Future bright for that young man. Let's hit the shotgun again. We have two receivers to the left and two to the right for Carr. He'll turn and get out of his hands quickly again. That time picking up the first down. And about six yards after that, he'll be brought out of bounds by number six, Isaiah Briscoe. For Miraville, actually, excuse me, that's going to be number six, Shamar Collier, the senior defensive back from Leland, Mississippi. So first two plays right off the bat, Scott. Quick throws by Eli Carr. Yeah, he hit them last, or his last game, he was 12 of 20 for 194 yards and was the USA South Football Offensive Rookie of the Week. Well, this time, they're going to get it out of the hands of Carr. They're going to hand it off up the left side, and they're going to get a few. It looks like a three-yard game that time. As that was, I believe, D.J. Taylor on the carry there. He Taylor also um, had a career high against Huntington a few weeks ago with 73 yards. So good pickup there on first down for the Tornadoes. Cargan's a snap, turns, looks down the field, got some pressure. He's going to have to get out of the pocket, turns and throws outside and incomplete. That time it was intended for number four. That was Jonathan Woods, and we've got a flag on the field. Right, just fixing to tell you that. <laughs> Not sure what they're going to call here, but we'll find out in just a moment. But some good pressure that time by the Scots getting into the backfield and forcing Carr to roll out of the pocket to his left and having to throw on the run. But one of the things you're going to see today, Scott, is a drop like you saw just there. He's an ineligible receiver on that play for Brevard. So great for the Scots as the Tornadoes will move backwards. But as I was mentioning a moment ago, the weather, the Tornadoes not only came to town, but they brought the bad weather with them as it's been rainy all day today and windy off and on. We may see some more rain later on in this broadcast, but with the rain, that can sometimes make things difficult for a quarterback, make things difficult for a wide receiver as well to hold on to the football. Right, very sloppy field just in um, in the sense of a lot of rain on it. Mm -hmm. you know, the field looking at it is in great condition, but still a wet field to wet field. We're going to have to look out for that during this game as this time Carr gets snap and he drops back. He's going to look down the field. Some nice pressure. He's going to have to get it out of his hands and somehow completes that across the middle of the field and breaking tackles and continuing to get down all the way to the nine-yard line. I believe that is number 16. Right, Justin Pendergrass on the catch there. A very good move. He's, um, yeah, and Carr, he Ooh. back in there took a really hard hit. His leg is sideways. Oh, geez. Yeah, I believe this is going to be a um, roughing the passer, obviously, because mm. he took a late hit after he released the ball. Um, just an unfortunate thing. Oh, goodness. Poor kid, yeah. Right, and that was called him to Corey Jackson Heath on the, on the hit there. Um, you know, everything's going in fast motion. You're trying to get to the quarterback. Sometimes you just take that extra step into it. Yeah, just trying to lay a lick, and unfortunately, it's an injury, never something you know they, they intend to do. But uh, car, car's day is done, car season 
is done after looking at that hit. So um, that's going to take a few minutes. They're going to attend to him and get him off the field. But you never want to see that in a game like this. And you certainly feel bad for that young man. Um, uh, like I said, a freshman certainly a, has had a very promising season so far. But, Scott, we're going to take a break as they will attend to him and um, get him off the field. Uh, you're listening to the Scott's Broadcasting Network, and we'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back, Scots Nation, and we are getting ready to get back to the action here on the field as we will have a new quarterback entering the ballgame. That is number seven for Brevard. His name is Dalton Cole. He's a 6'395 pound junior from Hendersonville, North Carolina. He'll be taking over the reins. A good pass a moment ago by Carr helped set up a big time first down near the end zone for Brevard. We'll see if this defense for Maryville College can stand tall. Nate looks like they're going to run with um, Stephen Hogan in this. I oh, they saw number seven head back out. Yeah, seven looked like he was going in. They've switched it out, and they've run the ball up the middle that time. A short game, but a good stop by the That's defense, why. and we've got another penalty. Now 
was Rouse on the carry for Brevard. Now just watching for the uh, officials to make a decision on what the call is. And typically when you're penalty that close to the line of scrimmage. Okay. So Brevard again, Scott, another penalty that moves them in the wrong direction as there is a personal foul by the offensive line from Brevard, and that's going to move them backwards and certainly help out this Maryville College defense. Defense so far this season, Scott allowing not around nine points a game. See if they can continue to stand tall here as it is going to be second and long for the Tornadoes. is complete as that time Stephen Hogan gets it down the field and completes it to Cedric Brooks. There were several Maryville players around just not close enough. They kind of lost him. It looks like in the back of the end zone. Yeah, it looks like Brooks kind of snuck in behind the defensive secondary, got to that corner, and Hogan did a really good job finding him and just throwing it right up and over that defense, and they'll complete that. And in an interesting formation here that now they get set up for the field goal is back to kick the extra point for Brevard is number 11, Stamati Damalos. Snap looks good, kick is up as well. And their first points of the ball game are on the board now as Brevard leads seven to zero for Maryville College on their first offensive possession. Scott took some time, but Brevard was able to make their way down the field on their first offensive drive, put it in the end zone. Now it's time for Maryville College to respond. Yes, it is, Ethan. Brevard came down passing just uh, one, maybe two runs during the whole series. So Maryville's going to have to be on their toes. Yeah, going to have to tight, tighten things up in the secondary, continue to work on getting pressure on that quarterback. But now it's time for offense, and this offense is something that Coach Ben Fox specializes in. As I mentioned earlier, was a former quarterback at Daniel Boone High School, also played quarterback and defensive back at Washington University in St. Louis. He loves to move the football and spread it around, and he talked about before the season, Scott, how – Really, it's all about the personnel you have. They asked him, they said, hey, what are you going to run? He said, it just depends on the personnel. If a good coach and if you're smart and know what you're doing, it's not necessarily you're stuck in your ways on a set type of offense. It's based all the time each season on what your team brings to the table and how you need to change things schematically. So he'll be able to do that today and right now getting ready for the kickoff as back to receive for Maryville. We have got number eight. That is Connor Chandler, the sophomore wide receiver from Lenore City. And it looks like, I want to say that's 29, Malachi McDowell back as well. As Tamati Domalos gets the kick off. It's up and good. Oh. <laughs> and a good recovery with that bounce there. And the ball's on the ground. It looks, they, looks like they're going to say he was already down when that ball came out. But a good return by Malachi McDowell. Another one of these talented freshmen that they're going to be talking about over the next few seasons. So here comes the Maryville College offense. So far through two games, averaging around 14 points a game, 223 yards a game, about 162 through the air, 122 on the ground. So a little bit of a balanced attack for the Scots through the first two games this season. And they'll start off on the ground as they hand the football up the middle and cutting back and going through Heath, the line. Sorry, Heath, another flag came out. Yeah, that was number 18 that time carrying the ball. That was Christopher Hawkins we have for Maryville. as well, Heath. And that looks like, Scott, that was a – Kind of a helmet to helmet hit. So I think that's why that potentially is down. And personal foul, defense number five, 15 yard penalty, first down. Personal foul on number five and a first down for Maryville College as they're attending to the player on the field. And we hope he's okay. But with the penalty again, that will bring a big first down for Maryville. We're going to see if they're going to be able to get down the field and answer right back early on in this ball game with a touchdown. They'll put the ball at the 47-yard line. It's 
Scott, while they're attending to him, talking a little bit more about Coach Ben Fox, one of the things he mentioned, you know, in his um, presser to start as the head coach is he talked about his core values and the core values that he was going to teach to this team and what he wanted them to live by. And we'll go over those real quick. He had four core, core values. The first one, love. He said a team that loves each other is a team that will win. And he talked about loving what you do every single day and also loving each player and respecting each player. The next one was accountability. He said players will be accountable to coaches, coaches will be accountable to players, and players are accountable to each other. And he said the best culture is when a player does something that goes against the culture and gets corrected by another player, right? The coaches have a job to do, but you know you're doing the right thing when I don't. your coach doesn't even have to say anything. Another player holds right. them accountable. So we'll talk a little bit more about those core values a little bit later, but those are the first two we wanted to mention as they're going to get back to it and the action here on the field as number 18, Chris, is back, and they'll get the snap. And the shotgun formation fake, the handoff to 18, fired down the field and complete. Nice first down across the field to number one, T.J. Coleman. Yeah, very good pass right there, Heath. He was wide open, cut right in to the basically the heart of the zone that they were playing. And, um, you know, the guys there, why not throw it to him? Yeah, it looked like he kind of ran a slant route and cut across the middle, split the linebackers, and a good job fitting it and threading the needle by number 12, Trevor Thomas, the junior quarterback from Rome, Georgia. So Thomas in the shotgun again. He's got a running back to his right, two receivers out to the right, one to the left, and it looks like a tight end on the left side of the offensive line. And they're going to hand the football off, and a good run up the middle, and taking it around the left side that time is number 21, Lamar Childress. Good run right there. He got a couple of yards, kind of stretching the defense out just a little bit, letting them know we can go around the corners. Just a quick um, update of information on the couple of plays earlier that was – DeMonte Anderson that was injured for Brevard. He was one of their defensive leaders. Well, we certainly wish him the best as a second and around five for Maribel. Thomas will get the snap. He's going to hand the football off again. Up the middle he goes. And about a three-yard gain that time by Childress. Another big run for him and a little bit of thunder and lightning. We saw some speed a minute ago. Childress has got some speed too, but he's got a little bit more size, a little bit more pop to him. As you look at Lamar Childress, 5'9", 215 from Nashville, Tennessee. Went to McGavick High School. So that's going to be third and short now as Thomas turns and gets the call from his coach. And Maribel bringing a few extra players in, swapping out just a little bit. So now they're going to have, looks like a two tight end set now for Thomas. And Thomas gets it, fakes the handoff, rolls to the right, sees nothing, tries to take off. But good defense by Brevard getting into the backfield. As they will bring him down. Yeah, he's a little extracurricular activity out in the back just a little bit. Referees are just kind of talking to the two players, just saying get back to the game. So fourth and six now for the Scots. And a big time play right here for this Maryville offense. It looks like they're going to go for it. You've got Thomas in the shotgun. You've got trips to the right. Needs about six yards to get that first down. And he's just going to back up a little bit and do a little bit of a pooch punt that time and try to get it close to the end zone. Let's see if they're successful. And yes, they're going to give it to him inside the one, Heath. Wow. Very good play right there. That's awesome. And an even better play, Scott, by number one, TJ Coleman, to get down the field and be able to tiptoe right, right in front of that, that end zone. Rope, yeah. rope right there. So. Absolutely. So if you're a special teams coach, you have to be pleased by seeing, yes, yes, you do. <laughs> seeing that right there. Has a long way to go, 99 yards for Brevard to get down the field and into the end zone again and need the defense to really step up here and get this ball back as Maryville looked like they were making some good progress, just kind of got stopped around the 30. And so now here comes Brevard. Come on, 
as Hogan will hand off the football. Looks like about a five yard gain. Yeah, it's going to be number 29, Damon Rouse, the junior from Charlotte, North Carolina, on the carry. So it'll be second and about four. Gets a snap in the pistol formation. He turns and hands the football off. And a good, good job good stop, by this Maribel College defense, meeting the running back in the backfield and bringing him down to the turf as a host of Scots were there to greet him at the line of scrimmage. <laughs> Looks like it's going to be about a two- to three-yard loss on that play. Yeah, a really good play by Lowry and also uh, Starcher Heath on the stop for Maribel. Good job, both of those young men. Yeah, so that's going to move him backwards, and now it's going to be third down. So one more big stop here, and Maryville College could get the football back on offense. So shotgun formation, and he's got a running back to his left. He's got three receivers out to the left and one to the right. He's going to bring a man in motion, drop back, turn. Looks like a little bit of a screen pass to his running back. Breaks one tackle. Gets taken down on the second. It's going to be awfully close. Let's see where they're going to spot it. Right, referee's indicating fourth down. Fourth down, so, yeah, and if you're providing for Scott, you, get, you know, even if you are close to that first down marker, that's too risky to try to go for a run here. Coming out, so. so a good stand by the Maryville College defense, and that's going to get them back the football as back to receive the punt is the same as the kick returners. You've got number eight for Maryville on the field. That is Connor Chandler, and you've also got number 29, Malachi McDowell. A little bit of a high snap, but he does he is able to get it off. Chandler moves out of the way. We'll watch it roll, and that's going to take a tornado roll and go over the 50, over the 45, all the way back to the 40, and that is where it will be down. Yeah, you don't really want to mess with those balls right there, Heath. It's wet. The field's wet. Um, oh, now we have a down referee as well. Yeah, this, uh, this weather, weather can be tough, especially on what we talked about, the conditions on the field, which uh, they did a great job getting this field prepared and ready to go. The weather sometimes can make things difficult in an event like this. As we've got a referee down on the turf. And so, Scott, as they attend to him, actually they're going to get him off. I'm going to say we're going to take a – looks like we're going to take a break, but it looks like he may be getting up in just a moment. But you saw the first offensive drive for Maryville. Right? Scott, what do they need to do to be able to finish that on this drive? Uh, good question, Heath. They were running the ball well. Just mm -hmm. um, that one play on third down weren't able to get anywhere, but allowed a uh, defensive lineman to get into the backfield. Yep. Um, other than that, I think they still would be driving the ball now. They had a good slant, good slant pass right there, kind of keep the defense back and paying attention, a couple of really good runs on the end, so just keep doing what you're doing, but protect your quarterback just a little bit more. Well, and, and something you saw with Provard early on, and the Maryland was doing it too, is getting the football out of your quarterback's hands quickly right. to, to allow your playmakers to, to make the plays and do things down the field, and they've been doing a good job of that. That time on that sack that we saw earlier took a little bit of time for that to develop, and as he rolled out of the pocket, they were able to meet him, And uh, but also, one of the things to consider is, like we talked about, this is kind of like an extended spring practice for a lot of these teams. So you've got a lot of guys that are still learning, still adapting, especially on the offensive line. There's a lot of things to learn and adapt to, and even more so when you're introduced to a, a new offense right. with it's a new coach. Yeah. Everything. So getting that is crucial as well. Um, but, yeah, one one play away from probably continuing to move down the field and then could have put that in the end zone in that first drive. And, uh, Scott, it looks like everyone is seeing now that the referee is back up. Looks like he's doing okay. They're going to check on him as the trainers for both sides attending to the referee, making sure he's good to go. And Coach Fox is over there talking to his offense and preparing his quarterback for this drive. As right now, Brevard leads 7-0 to zero early on in this ballgame. 
And that referee is going to come off field for a moment. Right. Looks like a lineman. Or a line judge, I should say. <laughs> <coughs> well, Maryville's ready to get started. The Reds ready to get started, but still got to wait on the uh, referees to get ready. Yeah, so they've got him off the field now and attended to him, and hopefully he's, he's he'll be okay. And so here they go, getting ready to get things going again, and it's going to be in the shotgun for Maryville College as Thomas will have a running back in the backfield with him. That's number 18, Christopher Hawkins. He's going to have two wide receivers out to the right and two to the left. Kids are definitely ready to get started here. But <laughs> just getting everything organized and set right. back up again. Referees are just trying to explain to the coaches the changes on the uh, alignment of where the, each um, referee or umpire will be located. Or back judge in that instance, too, of where they're going to be located so the coaches know what's going on. Absolutely. All right. We're going to get the whistle for a go, so let's play some football. Thomas is going to send a man in motion. He's going to get the snap. He's going to turn. He's going to hand it off up the middle. He's got a nice opening by the offensive line, and that's going to be awfully close to a first down. Nice run by Christopher Hawkins. Good run there by Hawkins. Looks like they're going to give it to him, and it will be first and 10 for the Scott. So now it's at midfield for Maryville College, and a substitution coming into the game as it looks like Number three was about to come in. He got sent back to the sideline. That's Cody Eastep, the sophomore running back. I knew I recognized that name. He's actually from Grace Christian Academy High School here locally. They'll turn. They'll fake the handoff. Get it out of the hands of Thomas quickly. And good coverage by the defensive back as that football is going to fall incomplete. Yeah, that looks like the... Looks like the receiver there wasn't quite sure. It looked almost in a blocking type mode coming out, and the ball just went right by him. Well, and smart play by Thomas. We talked about how getting sacked in the backfield and losing yardage can't afford to do that and have long gains that they're going to have to make to get that first down. And that time Thomas recognized it. He got it out of his hands quickly. Even if it falls incomplete, it saves him from losing five or six yards. As they'll hand the ball up the middle to Eastap. Eastap breaks one. He takes another with him. And it's going to take a few tornadoes to bring that young man down. Oh, definitely, Heath. And he got about a three-yard gain, so it's going to make it third and about seven for the Scots. But good play. Try to try to catch the tornadoes a little off guard, looking for a miracle to pass. So third and seven for Maryville, and they'll turn and get the call from their coaches. Thomas gets a snap and drops back. Good protection. He gets it out of his hands and thrown a little high over the wide receiver, and that's going to go out of bounds to the right. It'll bring up fourth and long, and that will force the Scots to punt. Yeah, it looks like a little bit of uh, bumping there with between Maribel and Jock Pledger with uh, Brevard as the receiver went up, but referee didn't think it was significant enough to throw the flag on that one. Punt is off and a little bit of an angled punt that time. Oh. The attendant has tried to pick the ball up but as soon as it was coming to a stop, most of Scott's standing out there waiting on him, but then really quickly that we have a flag back here at the 46 yard line at the bar. Creek, Georgia, 
that Scott Brevard's last offensive drive started at the one yard line. This one's not going to be a whole lot better as that personal foul moves him backwards. They're going to say now it's half the distance to the goal, so that's going to put them at the 10. But again, you, you've seen this a few times today where it's just sloppy penalties, uncalled for penalties have moved them backwards, and you have to imagine Coach Kayat is not too pleased to see that so far. So now Brevard's going to start. Three junior from Okoe, Florida. Fakes the handoff. Looks down the field. He's going to go deep with it. Good defense by the defensive back, staying right with him. Excellent job by Shamar Collier. Staying with the wide receiver, and that's going to fall incomplete. So it'll be second and ten. Collier step for step with the receiver all the way down. If anyone was going to end up coming up the ball, that looks like that would have been Collier's. A great defensive play by the defensive back there for the Scots. So second and ten. Hogan is in the pistol formation with the running back behind him. He'll get the snap. He'll hand it off. And bounce it to the outside as the running back. Play ran that time by number three, Mitchell Yoder, the sophomore running back from Columbus, Georgia, for the Tornadoes. About a six-yard gain on the play. It'll bring up third and four. They will move him over a state or two. It's uh, Columbus, North Carolina. Oh. <laughs> All right, third and four, another big opportunity here for the Scots to make a stand and get this football back. They've been battling hard here on defense in this ball game. So he'll get some pressure. He'll turn to get it out of his hands quickly. Oh, good and catch. is it broken up? No. It it's broken up. up, incomplete. As seven tried to make a play on it, but talk about defense. We mentioned him a minute ago, Scott Shamar, Shamar Collier, first on the other side of the football early on making a play. He's on this side of the defense that time, and he breaks up the pass. Yeah, it looked like Dalton Cole had that catch and um, just kind of juggling as he went to the ground, apparently. We were blocked a little bit here on off through the sideline, but um, a good attempt, but a better defensive play. Well, and it just a tremendous job by the defensive back yes. is, is not to give up on the play. And what he did is he got his arm in between the wide receiver and just broke his arms free of each other and caused him to cause him to drop the football and force an incomplete pass. And now the Tornadoes will be punting and almost blocked, but just able to get it off. And Chandler is going to move out of the way. It's going to take another tornado roll, and the Scots are going to start on offense the same place they started the last offensive drive. They'll start at the 40. Well, a good start for Maryville, a good defensive stand back there. That's two now in a row after giving up the opening drive touchdown. Now Maryville needs to drive down and put some points on, them, on the board themselves and um, just kind of start getting the momentum going more their way here. Absolutely. You have to like what you see defensively if yes. you're Coach Fox. And after that last offensive drive and incomplete pass, he, he called his team over. He talked to his wide receivers a little bit and gave them some education. As this time, Thomas gets it out of his hands. And a catch by number 86 for Maryville making the play. But no th nothing doing as that time he's met at the line of scrimmage by the defense. Yeah, Logan Aikens on that play right there on the stop four. For the Tornadoes, um, read very well by the defense. but Yeah, a catch, catch made by Logan Aikens of, of the Scots, and he's going to line up on the right side of the offensive line this time as second and ten for Maryville. Thomas gets the snap, fakes the handoff, gets it down the field, Good and catch. caught. And a flag. Yeah, it looks like a, there's going to be another personal foul as the safety as Coleman, Coleman was coming down, just went right for his head. It looked like a helmet-to-helmet. Yeah. Helmet. Right, that was called from the back judge. But a terrific catch, Scott, by Coleman as that one was sailing a little bit. <laughs> Targeting. Oh, wow. Right, and they just disqualified number 37 as well after calling that for targeting. As you said, Heath, he went for his head. And uh, Wesley Ross out of Cummings, Georgia, um, was caught on that penalty. So now he's going to have to leave. And it looks like there's been a timeout caught as well. 
Yeah, timeout Brevard as they're going to talk things over and readjust defensively. It looks like the coach for Brevard as well is going to be talking to the referees, getting things figured out. But a tough play for Brevard, but another big-time penalty that has hurt them in this ballgame. They may have a 7-0 lead, but they're not going to hold it much longer if they keep making these mistakes, and Scotts are going to find a way to get in the end zone. Yeah, if they continue to do this, that's hurting them. It's hurting the defense. I know, you know, we looked at that first drive and what happened with their quarterback, but and I'm hoping that has nothing to do with what's going on, you know, with them playing a little bit more aggressive. But, you know, they just need to take a deep breath and get back out and just play some football, both teams here. Absolutely. You've got two great coaches on the field with two great teams and just, just want a clean game and everyone to continue to stay safe and uh, be able to have an excellent football game no matter what here today. But Maribel College with an opportunity to try to get down the field here and see if they can tie up this ball game. So right now, Trevor Thomas back on the field with the Maribel College Scots on offense. He'll be leading the way for this team at quarterback. It is first and ten after that targeting penalty from Brevard. And as Scott, I was talking a minute ago about the catch by T.J. Coleman. That was a little bit high. That, that ball kind of sailed a little bit, and you wonder if maybe just the wetness of the ball caused the slip out of Thomas's hands. But Coleman did a really good job going up and making that play yes, and getting a first down for his team. So Thomas in the shotgun. Defense looks like they're going to bring a blitz now as they've got a few guys lining up on that line of scrimmage. He'll turn. He'll fake the handoff. He's going to roll and escape that pressure. He's going to direct his offense turn and almost and complete. Uh, he was directing number 89 for Maryville. That was Jalen Brooks, and he was telling Brooks to cut back in, and Brooks did, and he threw it right there for him. But we talked about the slipperiness of the football and the weather conditions and how that was going to affect the quarterbacks, how it was going to affect the wide receivers. And we see it right there as it just slips out of his hands. It did. It did. It looked like a little, little heat on it as well, too, mm -hmm. so in a short distance. But, um, Slippery football that, and a little bit of a heater don't make a good combination no, for not, sure. Not, on a, not a, with a football anyway. So second and ten, and they'll hand it off this time. Whoa. Took a hard tackle, knocking him out of bounds. Um, not only took him out, but took the um, the yardstick too <laughs> and bent it up. Gonna have to yeah, add the yardstick to the injury report today. Yeah, they're gonna have to get that fixed as uh, that uh, they are that marker is bent quite a bit. And Heath on that play, that was Dante Anderson making the tackle for Brevard. Um, as you, you obviously hear, he's returned after his injury um, last series. And Childress tried to bounce it outside that time, Scott, but forcing him to go east and west more than north and south, and they just really weren't able to gain anything there. So he got taken down to the turf and out of bounds. And a little bit surprising. They they haven't stopped the game because of the yard marker, so they're going to they're gonna keep going here. Scots need a big time play here. Third and long for Maryville College. Thomas gets a snap. He fakes the handoff, drops back, looks down the field, and finds a yeah, man open. A he completes it and just threads the needle. And an even better catch for Maryville College. That's going to be caught by number nine, Jacob Cortez, the 5'11, 190 pound senior from Lenore City. Went to Lenore City High School. Very good catch there. Caught that in traffic, too. So was able to catch it. Um, Looks like Anderson down again for Brevard as well. Yeah, it's got a great catch by Cortez, but a really good throw by Thomas. He anticipated when he was going to make that cut, and he fired it on a bullet. And as soon as Cortez made his plant, turned to make the cut, the ball was right there waiting for him and just put it right in the bread basket. Got a big-time first down for Maribel. Well, he's something, too, that, you know, playing football, you know, through high school and so forth, um, being a receiver, knowing – you know, the plays, you know when you got to cut, when your turn is, and so forth. The defense doesn't. You're playing on a wet field, so it makes it probably just a little bit slicker. So the 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 receiver has more an advantage, and the quarterback, you know, working on the timing with the receiver, knows when he's going to cut, when to throw, or the defender doesn't. So you've got a little bit of an advantage there, as long as, obviously, the receiver doesn't slip down. But 
um, good play, good timing on that for both the receiver and the quarterback. Well, and two experienced players on this team with a lot of chemistry yes. between the two of them. Um, but I would say, too, what's impressive about it, Scott, is not only that, but new offense. Can't say it enough about such little time having to learn this offense, build the chemistry within the offense, and you make plays like this moving down the football field. So a nice first down for Maryville, and they're still attending to the player on the field for Brevard. So, Scott, we're going to take a quick break with them. Brevard leads 7-0. to zero. Maryville College has the football on the 12-yard line, and we'll be back in just a moment. You're listening to the Scott's Broadcasting Network. All right, back to it, and the offense is on the field. We've got 144 remaining here in the first quarter as they'll turn, fake the handoff, and right there waiting for him was the defense of Brevard. A good defensive play that time by Stephon Kennedy, the lineback senior linebacker there to make the sack. Yeah, he got past the lineman and was just waiting in the backfield, and there he was. Yeah, no, nowhere to go that time for Thomas. That is going to be second. It looks like around 16 or 17 for Maryville. Thomas will drop back. Get it out of his hands quickly. He'll complete it. That's the, the sophomore, Connor Chandler. He breaks one tackle. He breaks another. Good run. Good and a run, run. really nice play by the young wide receiver to get outside and be taken down around the five-yard line and getting a lot of that large they, yardage they just lost right back. Yes, very good. Very good play on Chandler's part right there. Being able to try to outrun the defense, was able to get to the corner. Not quite able to get in, but definitely got Maryville very close. Absolutely. So it looks like around the five yard line. Oh, hand the football off this time. Christopher Hawkins carries the ball. Looks like no gain there for Hawkins. Maryville tried to get him off the right tackle there, just couldn't quite get him in there. So, Scott, they're going to bring out their kicker. In the first quarter, he. So in the first quarter, but when they come back, it looks like the special teams was coming out into the field, and the one who will be making that kick will be number 35, Connor Rutledge, the freshman. And Scott, a good start to the season. Still early, but a great start for the young freshman kicker for Maryville as he uh, is 2-2 two two to start the year with a long of 39 yards. And he'll have a nice little chip shot here um, as long as everything goes smoothly. And so they're, they're at a break as we are just finished the first quarter. Brevard leads 7-0. to zero with Maryville getting ready to try to kick a field goal. You're listening to the Scots Broadcasting Network. We'll be right back. All right, getting ready to start the second here is freshman kicker Connor Rutledge back to make the kick. Good snap. And good kick. Kick is up and good for Rutledge, and Rutledge now three of three 
to start the season. And the Scots of Maryville College are on the board. Good job there by Maryville College. Kind of felt like um, almost at Stanford Stadium there for a second. I was going to say up and over the hedges. <laughs> Well, now, like I said, Maryville College on the board, their first points of the day. Brevard was leading 7-0, so now it is 7-3. And two great defensive stands the last two drives for Maryville. See if they're able to do it again and continue to give this offense a chance to chip away at this and get back and take the lead. But right now, Rutledge back getting ready to kick, and Maryville's, they're ready to go, Scott. They're waiting on the kickoff return team of Brevard to get on the field. Right, Heath, and, you know, like you just said, talking about Maryville just scoring, anxious to get that ball back so we can go do it again. Back to receive for Brevard, number 17, Jamiriel Parks. Again, the Knoxville native from Carnes High School, back to receive for Brevard. Rutledge with a good kick, gets back and deep. And this time it's going to be caught by appears to be number 20 of Brevard. That is Aaron Bennett, the junior running back from Forest View High School in Gastonia, North Carolina. And Brevard will now take over on offense at the 36-yard line. Now time for Maribel's defense to hold again, get Maribel the ball back. Get a chance to put some more points on the board for the Scots. Turn and pitch it out to the left. And good defense! And slicing through and making the tackle. Number 50, Bo Herring, the senior linebacker. Yeah, good stop on Yoder there trying to come around the end. So, um, Knocks, actually knocks him back just a little bit, loss of two. So the Tornadoes will be coming back to the line at second and 12 now. Yeah, hearing six now total tackles for the season, one sack and two interceptions, having a nice start to the se his senior season. As they'll send a man in motion now on offense goes Brevard and Hogan turns and throws it. It's tipped as he makes a throw, so it's kind of awkwardly Makes its way to the wide receiver. He's unable to hold on to the football incomplete. And now third and long. And Scott, this defense right now for Maryville has got a lot of energy. Oh, yes. You can momentum really see the momentum. More. Yeah, yeah. Right too, Maryville's way. Yeah, they had uh, Yoder in motion, but it looked like they were going to pitch it out to him coming around the end and instead try to quick toss to Cedric Brooks. Uh, that one fell incomplete. And again, Maryville now at holding them down. Tornadoes have the ball third and 12. So third and 12, Hogan back in the shotgun for the Tornadoes. And Maryville will split things out. Looks like they've got three defensive linemen rushing. So Hogan's got a little bit of time. He turns to get it off. It's caught and then tackled, but not before Scott. A big time throw makes a big time first down as they connect that time to number 17, Jamiriel Parks. Right, he, he caught the ball up around the 50 yard line. Um, kind of danced a little back while he was battling the defender, but they're going to give him his forward momentum. Yeah, Maryville tried to send a few more players in coverage that time, only sending three, but that created a nice little pocket in time for Hogan, and he was still able to cut through that zone and get a first down. So now he's back, and this time he's in the pistol. He's going to turn. He's going to hand it off up the middle, and the Maryville College defense right there to meet him. Yeah, he's a good job right there for Maryville. As uh, Caden Harmon was able to sneak in and drop him or at least meet him in the backfield a little bit. It's got a, have no game. a lot of local products on this Maryville College roster. Caden Harden, Harmon, who made the tackle, a junior linebacker from Halls High School. One of the things that's really important to Coach Ben Fox is talking about continuing to get guys from these areas here at Maryville College. And he's done a good job of that so far as he's got two commits for next season. McMinn Central middle linebacker Jay Sterick and Mount Juliet running back Cam Malone. So really trying to keep these in-state prospects here at Maryville College. And he said of, it looks like a timeout was called. Okay. 
So a timeout for Brevard. Second one of the half. And, Scott, we'll take one with them. Your score, Brevard 7, Miraville College 3. You're listening to the Scott's Broadcasting Network. Hogan drops back. He tries to make a play and run up the middle, and nothing doing as he tries to escape the pressure, but he's not going to be able to get away from number two of Miraville College, Caden Harbin with the sack. Good play by Harbin right there, right in the backfield very quickly. Dropped him back. It looks like now a third and 15 for the Tornadoes. Bit good time for a big time stop here for Maryville. Well, Scott, and on the last third and long, they were able to connect down the field to Jamiro Parks with Maryville only rushing three. You have to wonder this time if Coach well, Ben Fox decides to bring a little bit of pressure. Illegal substitution, Heath, on the offense. Back that up another five yards. We're going to make now third down and 20 for the Tornado. So another costly penalty for this Tornado football team, and it's going to bring third and 20 for this Brevard offense. A little bit of rain starting to make its way over Honaker Field. Just light rain so far, and hopefully it stays that way. As this time, they'll hand the football up the middle. Looks like a, just a halfback draw that time. And Right here, Darren Bennett, Gastonia, North Carolina. He is a 5'10", 175 junior. Good play for Maryville. Looks like um, Brevard was going to try to catch him with a delayed draw, and Maryville had none of it. Yeah, about a 10-yard gain, but it was, well, excuse me, actually about an 8-yard gain, but it was third and 20. So a difficult play that time offensively for Brevard and a good stop defensively. Now they give their offense back the ball again as they'll get the ball off on a punt. It's a little bit angled and right there to meet it and make the catch is number 8, Connor Chandler, and that is where the Maryville College offense will take over. We'll see if Maryville can maintain the momentum offensively that they had earlier. It's got 10.52 remaining in the second quarter as Brevard leads 7-3. Brevard got an opening touchdown on their first drive offensively. Since then, tough sliding for the Tornadoes and for Maryville College. They've just continued to build. You've seen momentum continue to move for this team. And the last time on offense, they were able to get down the field and get a field goal. At that time, the momentum continues, and they'll make a nice play across the middle. That will be to number nine. I believe that is Jacob Cortez, the senior wide receiver for Maryville College. And another player for Brevard down. That may be number seven, it looks like, because um, he was in on the tackle. That would be Derek Frazier, a senior. Well, Scott, we'll let them take a look at him, and while they do that, we'll take a break with them. It is seven to three. Brevard leads, and we're in the second quarter here on the Scott's Broadcasting Network. I'm Heath Dunkel alongside Scott Dunkel. We'll be back in just a moment.
Play outside to Cortez, and he'll be brought down. Trevor Thomas's pass complete. Third down, they'll fake the handoff, they'll turn and fire it across the middle, it's tipped up in the air and it's intercepted. And escorted out of bounds, as that time making the interception, Scott, number 22 of Brevard, Jock Pledger. Right, Heath, and he was one of the players of the week two weeks ago for um, defensive, basically for the interception. That ball right there, though, was just one of those tip drill balls. You just watch it and it fell right in his hands. Yeah, trying to thread the needle that time was Thomas to his tight end, and the linebacker was able to kind of tip it up in the air, and a pledger right there to come down away with it. So Brevard now back on offense and looking to try to extend their lead as Hogan in the pistol formation will get the snap. He'll turn and hand it off to his running back and bouncing outside and then having to cut it right back in to the teeth of the defense. Yeah, it was a little hard to see his number there for a few minutes. DJ Taylor on the run right there out of Lawrenceville, Georgia, out of Archer High School. He is a 6'1", 2'25", freshman. Or no, I take that back. 5'6", 170, sophomore. Um, but he looks like he has a little bit of power for that 170 frame. Absolutely. Kind of got a little bit of that Darren Sproles type build. Small, but shifty. Got a little size to him. Looks like he could pack a punch. As Hogan rolls out to the right, completes the pass, but a good job defensively as number 26, Grant Agnew, right there to make the tackle. Good stop, too, as well. Being able to bring down Dalton Cole. Dalton also is the backup quarterback, so looks like they're using him as a receiver a lot today. But good job, Maryville's part. Looks like third down and four now. Hogan's going to send the running back out, outside in motion. So he's going to turn, he's going to fire it, complete to Jamiriel Parks, and then tackled quickly by the Maryville College defense. But, Scott, we have got a penalty on the field. Hogan's pass complete to Jamiriel Parks. Hey, refs, y'all should have called that on your own without the coaches having to tell you. Yeah. <clears throat> Aiden Tanner with the tackle. There is a flag on the play. Yeah, it looks like depending on what this call is, whether or not it's a first down or they're going to bring the ball back because Brevard made enough for the first down on that play. Well, Heath, in a legal motion, it looks like they had two men moving at the same time. Drops Brevard back. Looks like now it will be third down and eight. So third and eight for this Brevard offense, who has just struggled to get anything going ever since that. After that first offensive drive that was successful for a touchdown, they have not really been able to move the football that well. As Hogan will drop back, and here comes the oh, pressure. Yeah. Good rush. And oh. he's able to get away from one, but no, he trips him up just enough to make him to continue to stumble and finally fall to the turf. But that would not have happened had it not been for the great effort by number 50, Bo Herring, getting in the backfield and disrupting the quarterback. Yes, he had Hogan running for his life. Unfortunately for Hogan anyway, great for Maribel. Um, he could not maintain his balance as he slipped and fell to the ground. And that's going to force Brevard to punt the football again. And Connor Chandler, sophomore wide receiver, back to receive for the Scots. Hey 
Chandler with the fair catch. And the Scots back on offense on the 30-yard line. Again, another great defensive stand for the Scots. Um, as you mentioned, you know, after the first series, they've um, played some really good and very tough defense. So 6.54 remaining in the second quarter. And Maryville would really like to get down the field and see if they can take the lead here as Thomas in the shotgun will get the snap. He'll turn, fire it out quickly to his running back. East step. Try to get it outside, but a little bit east and west there. He might have gained one on the play. Yeah, he was brought down by Toby Naylor there. He's a linebacker, sophomore, 6'2", 225, out of Southampton, England. That's a long travel. <laughs> For sure, as it is now second and around nine for Marival. Thomas will get the snap and he'll fake the handoff. He'll turn and fire it. And Scott, oh. that time, a high throw could have been costly. And luckily, the defensive back wasn't able to get there in time to make the interception. Oh, yeah, definitely, Heath. And uh, Jock Pledger was looking at that possibility of having that second interception like he did against Huntington about two weeks ago. So. That was fortunate that he was not about another step more to the left, or he probably would have come down with that ball. Third and long. About it. Looks like it's going to be closer to around eight yards to go for Miraville to get that first down as Thomas will drop back, and he's going to have some pressure. He'll turn and throw it low that time. And sliding down to make the catch was number 11, Hunter Burke, but it just bounced right off of his shoulder pads, incomplete. And so Maryville will have to punt the football. Right, a good try for that one, but just um, popped right back out. Not a lot he could do on that, so. Well, and you have to wonder if Thomas, you know, after that high throw a minute ago, was really focused on trying to lower that football, so had to throw it a little bit down at an angle and tried to make the catch was Burke, but as he was sliding, just bounced right off of him. And so now they punt it, and Brevard has the football on the punt return and trying to get something going. He breaks a few tackles. Going to get about four yards finally after all is said and done. And that is Pendergrass, number 16. Justin Pendergrass, the freshman wide receiver on the punt return. And now Brevard on offense. They'll have the football at the 41-yard line. So five minutes and 24 seconds left to go here in the second. Really could use another big time stop. And then if you get the football back, you're going to have to move the football quickly down the field if you're Maryville. So Hogan in the pistol. Behind him, number 25. And they'll hand the football up the middle. And that was to number 20. That was. That was Aaron Bennett running that one, getting about a nine-yard gain there. Just a little off-left tackle motion right there for him and a good run. Yeah, good run on first down for Brevard. Second and one. Hand it off to him again. He's going to lower his helmet and run right through the middle, and he's going to pick up a first down. Helmet came off after the play is over, so he'll have to probably go over to the sideline for just a moment. Yeah, it looks like he just saw an opening and tried to get as much as he could to get that first down. He's got some good speed on him and a big-time run, so a first down for him. And as he goes out to get his helmet adjusted and back onto the field, this end, number three, Mitchell Yoder, sophomore running back in to replace him. So first and ten for Brevard. Ball at the... 46-yard line. Two receivers to the right, one to the left for the Tornadoes as Hogan will hand the football off again, this time to Yoder and nothing doing. A good trip right there. Got his arm out just enough to kind of knock his legs out from under him. There's number 70, or they show 70 here. And we have got an injury timeout on the field. So Scott, we are 
Under five minutes left to go here in the second quarter. Brevard leads seven to three. Timeout on the field for an injury. We'll take one with him. We'll be right back. Back to the action and Brevard and Maryville back on the football field. As Hogan turns and gets his offense adjusted, moves his receiver in motion. So you're now going to have trips to the right, single receiver out to the left. And now he's going to be joined out to the left by the running back as he sends him out of the backfield. Hogan turns and fires it. And almost incomplete, but a good catch by number five. Cedric Brooks that time on the play. The defensive back for Maryville tried to jump, jump that pass and see if he be there intercepted or knock it down but he just missed it. And the wide receiver for Brevard, really patient, waiting for that football, making the catch, and then picking up a big time first down. So now the ball is going to be at the 27-yard line for Brevard. And they're inching their way closer to the end zone. And for Maryville, you really want to have a big time stop here and either force them to try to attempt a long field goal or pooch punt it back to your offense. As they run the football up the middle, a couple yards on that run, that game yet or back in there, kind of trying to continue to get some yardage for the Tornadoes. Uh, that looks like about a three-yard run on that right there. So a second and seven for Brevard as Hogan in the huddle talking to his team, and he'll they'll break. And the rain's starting to come back again. And they'll shift offensively so a uh, new look formation wise now is they'll adjust looks like they went from the pistol to the shotgun Hogan will drop back he'll turn a wide receiver screen yeah Jonathan Woods on the catch there for Brevard as um, they had Yoder back in the backfield again next to um, Hogan used him to kind of pull the defense into the middle hoping to maybe draw Maryville in and get that wide receiver screen out. Well, gaining a couple more yards in the play. And it looks like they're going to give him that first down. So a first, and first and 10 for Brevard. Maryville going to need a big stop here to keep them off the board. Absolutely. And a new running back in the game. Looks like DJ Taylor back in. So they'll hand it off to Taylor. Taylor will bounce it outside. East and west because the defense is right there. Good stop. And Scott. Yes. A little extra activity once they had him out of bounds. The defender slung him even further out of bounds after he had already, already or after the whistle had already blown anyway. Well, and that's why it's important just to know where you're at on the field. I mean, it looks like that time number one, Brandon Cloyd, was trying to just make the tackle and just sling him out of bounds, but in, you know, I don't think he realized they were already out of bounds when he did it. And so because of that, that will be a penalty for Maryville, and that's going to help Brevard as it's now going to be half the distance to the goal and move them forward. So it looks like Brevard now at the Maryville 9 with first and goal. And 
the football off to the left. Good stop by the Scots right there as that was number 14, DJ Taylor for the Tornadoes. And he was met by a nice group of um, Scots waiting on him. So Tanner and Herring that time on the tackle. Second and 11. 11 yards away from the end zone are the Tornadoes. Hogan in the shotgun formation. He's got two receivers to the left, two to the right. Looks like they could potentially be looking at a wide receiver screen either way. And now instead they're going to send the slant oh, nice. guy inside and Bo Herring right there to make the interception. Hogan threw that one right to him. It is almost like he looked like... That's who he expected to um, be waiting on that catch. Because Honestly, I didn't really see any other white jerseys in that area. Well, and it looked like what happened is their they're outside wide receivers, they were kind of bunched up on each side. The wide, outside wide receiver kind of cut out on a fly pattern, and the inside wide receiver kind of looked like a crossing pattern across the middle, and he was just trying to split it through the defense. Well, Herring was right there spying on him and made the big-time interception, and now the – Maryville College offense has the football back. We've only got a few minutes left here in this second quarter, so they're going to have to move the football quickly if they're going to get some more points on the board. Thomas gets it. He hands it off. And they'll gain a few that time as number 21, Lamar Childress, with the carry. Yeah, good run right there. At least a gain of about five. Scott, I thought they had a few minutes, but I guess time had dwindled a little bit further than I anticipated. And uh, so big time interception, but not enough time to get down the football field. So they ran it once. Coach Fox decided to let the clock run out the rest of the way, take it to the half. So your score after two quarters of play, Brevard 7, Maryville College 3. This was a game early on, Scott, that that first offensive drive, you really felt like Brevard had a lot of momentum and they were looking really crisp. But you want to talk about standing tall and really chipping away at this thing and fighting their way back. Maryville College did just that. They did. Uh, good job. The defense especially hung really tough. It looked like there at the end, Brevard was going to take the ball down. Put some more points on the board. They were able to come out with the interception right there. Uh, definitely giving Brevard more of a challenge um, in making them really have to work for any and everything that they're trying to get. Well, and Scott, you know, going into the half, both of these coaches have some adjustments to make. You have to imagine that if you're Maravol, that the adjustments they have to make if you're Coach Fox is defensively, hey, you did a lot of great things. Offensively, you got to finish drives. So he's really got to work on offensively, finding what they need to do to help finish each drive so they can finally get into the end zone. The field goals are great, and Relic is a really good jump kicker for them. But they're going to have to score some more points if they're going to find their way taking this lead back into this ball game. Yes, Heath, exactly. And the thing, that, though, that you saw is as the game was progressing, Maryville was getting further and further down the field. We were able to get that field goal um, on the next to last drive that we had, but we kind of – Lost that momentum in the next drive, not being able to get that first down. Yeah, a good fight between these two teams. And, and Scott, if you're Brevard at the half, I think I think it's pretty simple. The one thing, if you're Coach Kaya, you're talking to your team about penalties. You've right. got to find a way to eliminate those in the second half if you are Brevard to be able to help yourself in this ball game and try to finish this off with a victory because there were quite a few drives offensively for them and even some of their defense gave up, but mostly their offense that just shot them in the foot when they started to get something going. Right, and the thing is is they didn't quite hurt them as bad as they could have because Maribel still only got the three points out of it. But like you said, a lot of drives that were sustained because of, you know, I guess basically what you can say is for foolish penalties. Yeah, and they weren't typically your, your 
garden variety five yard penalties. They, these were drive killers where you had maybe a third and eight or a third and nine already a decent amount of yardage to try to make up for. You're eating 10, 15 yard penalties at a time that were just almost impossible to climb your way out of. And so they're going to have to talk about that at the half. You have to imagine Coach Kayette is not too pleased with what he saw from those things on the field. And he'll get those cleaned up. Coach Fox will get some things cleaned up offensively. That's his specialty. And I imagine we'll see this offense continue to click even more in the second half. So this game is far from over and it should be exciting as we've got two quarters left to play here on the Scott's Broadcasting Network. But we're going to take a break and when we come back, those two quarters of action in just a few minutes. We'll be back soon.
Good afternoon, everyone. It's halftime here at Maryville College in Honaker Field as Brevard leads Maryville 7-3. to For those of you who may be wondering why you're seeing fans exit the field at the moment, we just had a lightning uh, warning, which causes a 30-minute delay. So right now at the half, and we are on an extended 30-minute delay, and everyone has been advised to go back to their vehicles at the moment due to the lightning warning that we have coming our way so we'll try to keep you posted on what's going on there but just know for the next 30 minutes we are under delay and we will keep you posted soon you're watching the scots broadcasting network and again at the half brevard seven maryville three we'll be back soon
Good afternoon, Scots fans. I'm Heath Dunkel as you're listening to the Scots Broadcasting Network. Going to continue to keep you updated on what's going on here at the half. We have been under a lightning delay that has come and gone, and we have been advised that both teams will be back on the field at 4.05 to begin the third quarter. So again, both teams back on the field at 4.05 to get things going in the third quarter. Your score at the half, Brevard 7, Maryville College 3. You're listening to the Scots Broadcasting Network. We'll see you soon.
Okay. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Heath Dunkel, and you're listening to the Scots Broadcasting Network. As we stated a few minutes ago, both teams were to be back on the field at 4.05. They are back on and warming up, getting ready to start the second half of action. Third quarter should begin around 420. Again, third quarter should begin around 420 here on the Scots Broadcasting Network, and we'll get things going again as Brevard leads 7-3 to three in a very intense battle between these two ball clubs. When we come back, not only will we get things going with the second half of play, but Scott Dunkel and myself will be talking off and on about the halftime statistics and again, continuing to talk about what these teams need to do in the second half for each one of them to come away with a victory. We'll be back very soon.
Fans, another update for you here on the Scots Broadcasting Network. Um, as both teams were back on the field warming up, getting ready to start the third quarter, we were just notified that lightning has been detected in the area again, which has caused another lightning delay. That will be at least 30 minutes from now before we get things going again. We will try to keep you posted as we find out more. Again, from the last lightning indicator that we get, there will be 30-minute delay from that last moment. So right now we're under a 30-minute delay. If we find out more, we will let you know. Just kind of keep your ears open for us to come back on the air and keep you posted. But we will do our best to let you know and keep you informed as much as possible here on the Scots Broadcasting Network. Thanks for listening. It is still halftime. Your score, Brevard 7, Maryville College 3.
Good afternoon, Scots Nation. This is Heath Dunkel here on the Scots Broadcasting Network, continuing to keep you updated on what is going on with the game at hand as we have been on a lightning delay for the last little bit. The latest update is this. Right at the moment, the players should be coming back onto the field around 5.50 to warm up, and the plan is to resume action and begin the third quarter at 6.02 p.m. So again, players will be arriving back on the field at 5.50 Game will resume at 6.02 p.m. to start the third quarter here on the Scots Broadcasting Network. Thank you for your patience as we have been awaiting this weather to subside and clear up a little bit. And we're hopefully going to get this thing underway here in just a few minutes. So stay tuned to the Scots Broadcasting Network. And we'll hopefully have two more quarters of action here at Honaker Field and Maryville College in just a moment.
Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to MCScots.com, the Scots Broadcasting Network, as we're on YouTube. Scots Broadcasting Network, I'm Heath Dunkel, alongside Scott Dunkel, and we are getting things going again. Weather has subsided just enough for us to be able to finally continue this ball game, and we're excited about it as Maryville will get ready to receive here in just a moment as Brevard is getting ready to take the field to kick off to start the third quarter. Just so you know, for those of you watching right now, they have decided as well to reduce the time in the second half. So typically your third and fourth quarters would be 15 minutes apiece. They have agreed to be 12 minutes apiece. So the third quarter, 12 minutes, fourth, fourth quarter, 12 minutes. So we're getting ready to get things going here in just a second as Brevard is going to get ready to kick. Scott, it was a nice battle between these two teams in the first half before our delays at halftime. And uh, for Brevard, a lot of penalties after that promising first touchdown for them. And for Maryville, they really kind of got the momentum the rest of the half after they started getting things going defensively. Yes, they did, Heath. Uh, the unfortunate thing, just couldn't get enough of that momentum to get across the goal line. But they did score, so we look for more out of Maryville this half. Yeah, and it's going to be tough sledding for both teams as the field is not in great condition with all of the rain that has taken place over the last little bit. And Maryville starting off with the football will get to around the 37-yard line, and that is where they'll take over on offense here in the third quarter. We'll see if they can get things rolling as quarterback Trevor Thomas, Scott, looks to really try to build upon his first half. Had a few throws sail on him above receivers' heads, had one picked off. Um, so really just have to be careful in, in, with the football here in the next two quarters, and have, but also manage to get his team down the field. And that's a, that can be a tough job to balance. Right, but a good, at least, you know, he's got that first quarter or first half under his belt, got a little bit of um, more experience. Just being able now to um, put it together. Let's see what happens after this long wait. Players have been sitting around for a while trying to stay loose, trying to stay ready. Let's see what they do here now as Maryville comes to the line. Yeah, the pistol formation is the Scots. So now they'll move the running back to the right, and he'll turn, he'll hand it off. Up the middle goes the running back, and he's going to gain, looks, looks to be about four or five on the play. Yeah, Heath, and on the, on the tackle there, Jerome Bass, he also was one of the leaders in the first half for Brevard. He had three tackles in the first half. Now make that number four. Carry that time by Hawkins of Maryville. That's his fourth carry of the game. At the half, he had three carries for 13 yards, leading all rushers for the Scots. So it is now about a second in five for Maryville, and they're going to move the tight end in motion, and... Looks like Coach Fox didn't like what he was seeing as there were, might have been some confusion that time on the play, and he's going to take a timeout. So while he does that, Scott, we'll take a minute and just kind of look at some of the statistics, some of the stats that stood out to you for Brevard in the first half. All right, Heath, well, thank you. Passing for Brevard, they had 120 yards, none of 13, one interception, one touchdown, total 148 yards. They had 28 in rushing and 17 attempts, six first downs for them, leading rushers. Our leading rusher for Brevard was Aaron Bennett, five rushers, 24 yards. Steve Hogan had six passes, uh, out of, or six out of ten in passing, 64 yards, again a touchdown and an interception. And Cedric Brook, leading receiver, three catches, 45 yards with a touchdown. All right, Scott, thank you for that. We'll talk a little bit more about those halftime statistics in a moment as we're back to the action as Coach Fox talked to his offense, has got him back on the field and ready to roll. This time, Thomas hands it up the middle to the running back. And they will give it that time, Scott, to number 18, Christopher oh, Hawkins. We got a fight going on, Heath. Yeah. Number 11 there looks like Bryce Easter, a linebacker for Brevard. Conduct, 11 white. 
So Scott, an unsportsmanlike conduct on both teams. So now it is going to bring up third down for the Scots. After that handoff a moment ago to Hawkins. And we've got about a, it's going to be a third and one. You'd imagine if you're Maryville, especially with trying to be careful with the football, you keep it on the ground here and try to pick up a first. Right. That close. Maryville's been pushing Brevard back a little bit. Let's see if they continue. Brevard's going to send the blitz. So they'll turn, they'll hand it off. And up the middle, that time goes Hawkins, and Hawkins gets just enough to get a first down. Like I said, the good start. They've been getting a good surge in the, in the first three plays of the second half here. They'll just continue to do it. Wet field's going to make it even harder for them. So first and ten for the Scots as they're inching towards midfield. The ball is now at the 48-yard line as pistol formation again for Maribel. Thomas gets the snap. He hands the football off to Hawkins again. Hawkins carrying defenders with him, gaining a few more. About a Looks like they're going to probably mark him about a three-yard carry. It's going to be second and seven. Good carry again there by Hawkins Heath as he continually is helping Maribel just drive straight down the field here. And again, you have to imagine this is the, the recipe for success in this kind of game is to just ground and pound. You want to be careful with that football because you run the risk if you put it in the air too much, especially with these conditions. It's going to slip. It's going to give the opportunity for the defense to take advantage of it. So keeping it on the ground right now is Maribel. See if that continues. This time looks like they're going to roll out Thomas. He turns. He completes to Cortez. Cortez battles, takes a few defenders with him, and picks up a first down. Good pass right there, Heath. About a 10 to 11 yard gain, definitely a first down for Maryville and um, caught Brevard off guard. They thought Maryville was going to continue to run. Well, and, and so did I, and a good call by Coach Fox that time as he catches the defense sleeping and then finds the senior wide receiver open for a catch and a first down. So that's going to put the ball at the 38 yard line now for Maryville as this drive, the first drive of the third quarter, they're finding a lot of success moving it across the field. Thomas will get the snap. He'll turn handoff to Hawkins. Hawkins cuts back to the right, finds an opening, gets a few yards, and finally gets taken down by number five of Brevard. That is Logan Akins, the sophomore defensive back from Trenton, Florida. And hey, you can really tell this field is, you could really tell that this field is wet just because of I mean, you're already looking at some of the uniforms and the players are just drenched yeah. in water right there. But a good play. Looks like Maryville has driven the ball down to the 32 of Brevard for a second and looks like about five. And Scott, without visiting fans in the stands, you hear the sideline for Brevard chanting out defense over and over again, something you normally hear from the stand, from the fans um, as they're trying to motivate their defense, and it works right there. Is that time the defense gets in the backfield, and finally someone figures out how to stop Hawkins. Right, Heath, and that was Brady Penn, a 5'11 freshman out of Loganville, Georgia, Walnut Grove High School. Uh, got into pretty much in, almost into the backfield and made the stop, pulled him back about two yards. So it's going to be a third and long now for the Scots. We'll see what Coach Fox draws up here for his offense. Hmm. What's unfortunate, Scott, is that delay a game. It's kind of hard, you have to imagine, for the quarterback to be able to keep up with that because the, the clock, unfortunately, is not working on the field. And so that probably caused a little bit of confusion there for Thomas. But because of that, Thomas is moving backwards. So, you know, it happens. Unfortunately, you've got to figure out how to keep that mental clock in your head at the quarterback position. And that time he doesn't. It does move him in the wrong direction. But it's still an opportunity here for Maribel as it's third and long. We'll see what they're able to do with it. As Thomas gets the snap, he fakes the handoff. He drops back. He's got some pressure. He's going to have to – he lets go of it. He completes it to number one. 
Number one's battling, but he's going nowhere. He has stood straight up, and that is the junior wide receiver, TJ Coleman. So Coleman's going to get it to about fourth and five, and now we'll see what Maryville draws up here. If you're Maryville, Scott, do you attempt now to, to punt it? Because if you don't get it here, you give Brevard decent field position, but with time dwindling down, with reduced time in the third and fourth, can you can you afford to go for it here? Right, I would at this point, just because. But you know, again, looks like they're going to play the safety play and just the pooch punt right here. So they do move him back. They decided to do the pooch punt, and a good job. Getting down the field is number eight, Connor Chandler. And Chandler will down it at the five. And that is where Brevard now will take over on offense. 637 remains here in the third quarter. Your score, Brevard seven, Maryville three. Hey, just a little bit of quick information real fast. Um, just carrying a look at yesterday and today's scores of interest in the USA South Conference. Methodist defeated Greensboro 52 to 20, and Averett defeated North Carolina Wesleyan 33 to 29. This time, Brevard hands it off to number three, Mitchell Yoder, and Yoder's going to pick up nine on the play. It's going to be second and one. And all that action that I mentioned all. Eastern Division, mm -hmm. uh, since there's only three teams in the Western Division, two of them are playing today. Huntington is off today. Gotcha. A good win for Averett over North Carolina Westland. And then uh, I think you said, what, Methodist beat Greensboro? 52, yeah. to, 52 to like 20? Yes, and that should, I believe, give the Eastern Division to Methodist then at 3-0. and Oh, oh wow. We've got a flag after that last run. We'll see what the referees call. Looks like it's going to be a hold on the offense. That'll back him up half the distance. That's going to be about a second and 11 now for the Tornadoes and get them probably around the four yard line. Thought that was going to be a 10-yard penalty. They're going to say half the distance to the goal. So it's actually going to put them at the moment at the 7. So you're now looking at around a second second and 7 for Brevard. Second down eight at the seven. As number 9, Stephen Hogan, has got the ball at quarterback. He'll turn and throw it out quickly. Oh, what a pop. And what that a pop. wide receiver gets smacked, Scott. As that time catching the pass was Jamiriel Parks and paying the price as right there waiting on him was Caden Harbin. Right. And that's just one of those welcome back to the Knoxville area. <laughs> the welcome home. A little welcome right. home gift that time by Harbin. It's going to be third and looks like about three now for Brevard. Great opportunity here if you're Maryville to get a big stop and get this ball back to your offense. Got interesting play here. And up, oh, they're going to move Yoder back. And watch out for the screen down to the wide receiver. They get it out to him, and he breaks one. He breaks another, and then he's going to be brought down. He'll pick up the first down, but we do have another penalty. And uh, we'll see who that's on. If that's on Brevard, it's going to move him back again. Um, if it's on Maryville, it's going to help them move down the field. So we'll see what they call right here. Yeah, he's looking at the, the line. The, they were given a sideline warning. The players were basically at the line next to the field. Unfortunately, you've got to be behind that that line. That's what, about maybe two yards back? So with that being said, Brevard will have a first down. They will be at around the 21, and Hogan will get it. He'll turn it, hand it off up the middle, and waiting for the running back at the line of scrimmage was the defense. Nice play. 
and it's got the slippery conditions in full effect as the referee takes a dive. Yeah, like I said, you look at a lot of these players' uniforms, they are drenched. Aaron Bennett on the carry. They're going to give him about one. So second and nine for Brevard. few minutes left here in the third quarter as time continuing to tick off the clock again as we mentioned uh, reduced time here in the third and fourth quarter only 12 minutes in the third 12 minutes in the fourth is what was agreed upon after the lengthy delay and they'll turn and Hogan will fire it outside wide receiver screen and breaking one tackle and gaining a few more yards is number five Cedric Brooks and it looks like another flag down on the field yeah, and more than likely, Scott, that's going to be a hold by the wide receiver out there trying to set up the screen in front of Brooks, and it will indeed be a hold, and Brevard moves backwards. We talked about it at the break. One of the things, if you were Coach Kyatt, that you were going to talk to your team about at the half was penalties because it was the one thing that continued to kill drives for Brevard in the first half. And unfortunately, Scott, those penalties have followed them into the second half. Yes, it has. And this is their first drive in the second half, and I believe, what, three three penalties already? Absolutely. So three penalties so far in the second half for Brevard. Just continuing the streak of the first half. And it's Hogan now back in the shotgun formation. He's going to drop back, and he's going to look to pass. Merrill bringing the pressure. He's going to fire across the middle and in and out of the hands of Cedric Brooks. So it'll be third and long. Yeah, good defensive play right there. By number 24 of Maryville, that is Hayden Tanner, the junior defensive back for the Scots, helping break that up. So third and 19 now for Brevard. You have to wonder here, Scott, if you're Maryville, you almost look for a halfback draw as they're just trying to see if they can get a few more yards out of this to help give some space for their punter. Right, Heath, and they did that earlier. A good, good run, but looks we'll like he's slippery right there, trying to hang on to him. Still all wet, um, but it looks like he got within one yard of the first down. And Scott, they're bringing their players back out quickly like they're going to go for it. Fourth and short now for Brevard. They try to get Maribel to jump. Not a terrible thought there if you're Coach Kyde in his offense. No. Trying to hurry out quickly, trying to get the energy going. See if you can get Maribel to jump. They're not able to do so. He may just wait this clock out and call timeout. Yeah, he's going to let this clock wind down. He's going to call timeout right. before the delay of game, and then his team more likely is going to come out and punt. So they take a timeout. Scott, let's take one with them. Your score here in the third, Brevard 7, Maryville 3. You're listening to the Scots Broadcasting Network. Back to it as both teams back on the field and Brevard back to punt. They'll get it up. Nice punt that time. And Chandler's just going to move out of the way. It's going to take a tornado roll and it's going to go down to the 15. And that is where the tornadoes will stop it and Maryville will take over on offense. Yeah, Heath, that's one of those punts you don't really know for sure. Do I take the chance and try to catch it? If it's slippery and wet, you know, you take a chance, you fumble the ball, and Brevard's got excellent field position. Just let it go. Just let it land wherever it lands. Yeah, reduce the risk there if you're Chandler for Maryville, as Maryville now has an opportunity here. Only down four, as we mentioned. 248 was remaining a minute ago here in the third quarter. 
Still plenty of time in this ball game. And see if you can get something going here if you're the Scots. We talked about it at the half. The one thing they have to clean up is they were moving the football, just have got to finish possessions. And that's not going to help Scott as Thomas underthrows the wide receiver and it's intercepted. Right, Heath. And there's a flag over here. I can't tell if that's actually a flag over there. We've got well. two, actually. Yeah, I don't know if it's the same for the same thing, but you do have two flags on the opposite side of the field. So we'll see what they call. We're hearing from some that it may be a hold on the defense. So it was not a hold on the defense. Instead, they're going to say it was a sideline warning from Brevard, but that will still give the Tornadoes the football. So they're Scott there. Tornadoes, penalties have hurt them some, but you look right now and they're kind of inching their way closer to this side of the field. So you've got to be really careful here if you're the Maryville defense and have got to work hard. They've done a great job all game trying to give the ball back to their offense. Offense has just got to be able to finish. Right, right. Now time to get tough again. Hold them here. As Hogan is still at the quarterback. So Hogan will turn. He'll hand it off to Yoder. Yoder trying to find some space. will cut outside the left tackle. He'll gain a few and then be brought down. Mitchell Yoder carries the ball. Tackle made by Caden Harmon and Aiden Tanner. Looks like it was around a five-yard gain. They're going to actually say six for Yoder. So it's second and four. Yoder to the right of Hogan. You've got two receivers out to the right, a tight end out to the right, and a single wide receiver to the left. He'll send his tight end in motion. He'll take it. He'll hand it off to Yoder up the middle. Good stop by Maribel. And a good play by Nico Starcher there, right, th holding him, getting back in the backfield, not letting Yoder get anywhere. So third and four for Brevard. Hogan will come up to the line of scrimmage and call out the play. You'll see the team shift into their offensive set. And he's got a running back behind him in the pistol. He'll turn and hand it right off to him. And Maribel right there waiting on him. Nelson and Carlton making the tackle on that play right there. He this DJ Taylor had the ball. Good stop from the um, the two defensive men. Absolutely. Scott's standing tall defensively yet again. And so now Brevard will be forced to punt. And Scott, it looks like they're going for it, but you do wonder if they're going to move Hogan back a little bit and do the same thing that Thomas did with Maribel. Are they going to go for it or is he going to step back and is he going to Call try to pooch punt it? Oh, third, end of the third quarter. End of the third. Your score after three, Brevard seven, Maryville three. So one quarter left to determine who's going to come out on top here, and it's still anybody's ball game. You're listening to the Scots Broadcasting Network. We'll be back in a moment.
All right, Scott, fourth and four. And will Brevard go for it, or will they move their quarterback back a little bit and decide to pooch punt it? We'll find out in just a moment as they're lined up and getting things going here to start the fourth quarter. Hogan's going to get the snap, and nope, he's going to draw back and look to throw. Now he decides to run. He breaks one. He breaks another, and Scott, he's going to pick up just enough to get a first down. Yeah, he looks like about a six-yard run. Getting close to the um, first down marker, just a dive to try to get a couple extra yards. Maryville had a good rush on him right there, just allowed him to get through the middle. So if you're Maryville, you're asking your defense yet again to do what they can to hold Brevard here and get this football back to your offense and keep it a one possession ball game. As the Tornado offense breaks the huddle and gets set, Hogan gets the snap. He'll turn and he'll hand it off up the middle. And breaking one tackle and breaking another and bouncing to the outside. And Scott, this looks like it's going to be a touchdown. But it's coming back, I believe. And he got awfully close. I think they're actually going to say he got knocked out at the one. But, yeah, as you mentioned, near that line of scrimmage, there is a flag on the field. Or two. Or two. You hope they don't offset. You hope that there is two. Offense, number four, Holding. So you got to hold on the offense. That's going to move him backwards. And you'll take it again. This Maryville College defense, Scott, has to be tired. They've been on the field quite a bit. They've done a really good job this game battling, keeping their team in it. But one thing that has helped them a ton, too, is Brevard has continued to shoot themselves in the foot right, with penalties. Right. right. That was a good run by the running back there. But mm -hmm. the hold on... The wide receiver that was Jonathan Wood, a 6'2 senior out of Harvest, Alabama. Again, doing the same things we talked about before, continuing to draw penalties. So this time they'll turn, they'll hand it off to Yoder. Yoder is met. Good job. Good job. By the whole defensive line. Yes. Yeah, Christian Reeve right there to meet Yoder on the tackle. So was Matthew Walker. Also got, let's see, zero. Brandon Lurie, sophomore defensive lineman. And then as well, number 32, Demarcus Nelson. I mean, the whole defensive line was right there. It shed their offensive lineman, and we're just waiting on Yoder at the line of scrimmage. So it's second and 20 now for Brevard. No running back in the backfield. You've got trips to the right, two receivers to the left for Hogan. He'll turn. And a little bit of a trick play this time as they'll get it to Brooks on the outside. Brooks will get himself about four or five on the carry. Kind of sent him in motion on like a jet sweep, but kind of tossed it in front of himself to Brooks. And Brooks got a few there for Brevard. Grant Agnew on the tackle, and it's now going to be third and 12. Need a big stop here if you're the Scots. Hogan drops back. Here comes the pressure. He throws it down the field. He's got number seven, but seven unable to hold on to it a little bit past the fingertips that time as unable to come down with it. Number seven, Dalton Cole, a quarterback who also gets some reps at the wide receiver position and thought there was, going, there was an injury on the field, but luckily Scott gets up and he's going to make his way to the sideline. Yeah, just a little bit of, <clears throat> pardon me, landing on the arm as he tried diving for it and, and also taking a hit on Dalton as well. But a good stop by Maryville, good defense, making it fourth down and about 12. Yeah, it looks like he's all right. He's going to make his way over to the sidelines, talk to the trainers and the coaches, and take a minute to take a breather and get checked out. So it's now fourth and 12. And Scott, again, looks like Brevard's considering to go for it. We'll see what they decide to do here. They do. Hogan drops back. He's got some pressure. He's going to have to escape it. And here comes Maribel. He gets it oh. off, broken up, and incomplete. And Heath, I was really surprised that Maribel did not receive a um, either a late hit or a 
maybe even possibly a targeting as the Maryville player looked like hitting with the helmet right up under the chin. So referee was standing right there, let it go. So that was good for Maryville right there, but a really close possibility of getting a penalty at a bad time. Yeah, lucky they didn't get the call, but now the offense, Scott, has another opportunity here in the fourth quarter with 9-11 left to go in the fourth. Brevard 7, Maryville 3. It's still a one-possession game, and now Trevor Thomas leads the Scott offense out on the field. He's going to turn and get the call from the sidelines. Team will get set. You're going to have shotgun formation, two receivers to the left, two to the right. Thomas in the backfield. He'll get the snap. He'll turn and he'll hand off the football. Pushing through and gaining about one or two that time is number 18, Christopher Hawkins, back into the ball game at running back. Good run by Maribel, still being conservative, being careful with the ball more than anything else. Thomas drops back, fires, caught and broken up. That time was Chandler. Chandler had it in his hands, but a good hit by the safety caused him to knock it loose. Yeah, he, that was Wesley Ross with Brevard on the hit right there. Chandler just looked like he had it in his hands but couldn't corral it, and then Ross came in and hit him and just kind of made sure he didn't get it. The Maribel's got to hang on to those catches. Absolutely. Third and eight for the Scots. Thomas gets it. He'll drop back. Look down the field. Fire and intercepted. And here comes Brevard. Was right there breaking on it at the perfect time and making the pick was number 25, Quentin Jackson. Yeah, you could see he read that pass, the way he cut in between the ball and the or the or broke on the ball in front of the receiver that he saw that one coming. This is a big series right here for Maryville. Yeah, if Rivard's able to score here, they can make this a two-possession game. If they get a field goal, it's still a one-possession game. Maryville with an opportunity to tie, but what they can't allow is a touchdown as they hand the football up the middle. That time goes Brevard and David Rouse on the carry. He'll hand off to the middle again. Good another stop. Good, stop. good stop. And another penalty comes out. When you see it during the tackle, you almost wonder if it's like a face holding, mask. Holding. But yes, I agree. You do wonder that. I was wondering if it was going to be a face mask. It's actually, so it is a hold. It's going to move Brevard back. I mean, Scott, you have to imagine that two or three touchdowns today for Brevard have been taken off the scoreboard because of penalties. Or possible drives anyway. Yeah. yeah they've, they've had chances and then turned around and just backed themselves well, up. I mean, you had that one earlier, but the running back got it to the one. Right. And right. the penalty put them all the way back around the 30. Hogan gets the snap, turns, looks like it's going to be a little kind of bubble screen out to the wide receiver. They'll get it out there to him. He breaks one, breaks another, and then gets taken out of bounds. But not before picking up a first down. Right, again to Demario Park. Had to call his name a few times today, but Carnes product has done pretty well for this game, I'd say. I actually thought that was a first down past the yard marker, but one of the markers was down when I saw it. So it is going to be third down. It's going to be third and five. 
Yeah, after that big hit they had earlier and bent the uh, yard marker up, they're a little, being a little <laughs> bit more cautious. <laughs> a little harder now. to see. Third and five for Brevard. Tornadoes in the pistol formation. Hogan turns and hands it up the middle. Finds an opening. Gets past one defender and past another and is going to get awfully close. And, and he's in. Yeah, he's in. Right, Heath. That was Roush on the carry there. Looks like maybe when – looks like Maryville had him stopped, but maybe he got the ball across the plane. From the angle we had up here, it didn't look like he, his body got across anyway. Extra point is up and good, and so now your score – 14 to 3, Brevard leads here in the fourth quarter. Six minutes and 30 seconds left to go in this ball game. So if your offense gets it here for Maryville, you've got to get down quick and score and then hope your defense is able to get a three and out if, if they can and try to get your team back to football. Right. Well, defense has played a really good game today, so I'll have confidence in them being able to get another stop. But the offense has definitely got to get something down the field. Well, you almost feel like you're kind of in no huddle, two minute drill mode at this point in the game. Being down two possessions. And Chandler, along with McDowell, going back to receive for the Scots. In front of them is number 28, Cade Holcomb, freshman linebacker from Gallatin, Tennessee, from Friendship Christian High School. squib kick that time for Brevard and falling down and it goes Maryville as recovering the football for Maryville number 54 Tyler Bost freshman linebacker from Knoxville Tennessee went to Central High School he's able to fall on it at around the 30 yard line and that is where the Scots will take over on offense And they'll hand it off. Breaking a couple tackles this time, and here comes the Scots. Nice run that time by number 18 of Maryville, Christopher Hawkins, with a big time first down and getting them across midfield. Good play right there from Maryville. You notice something not on the field? No penalty flag. All right. <laughs> we'll take it. We'll take it. Yeah, I've not had to worry too much about Maryville on that this game, but it seems like Brevard gets one. So Thomas hands it off Come on. up the middle. And Hawkins goes for a few more. Thomas gets a snap, and he's going to drop back and look to throw. He's got some heavy pressure, and Thomas is going to go down. Yeah, he's right there on top of him was Toby Naylor. Also included on that was Jerome Bass. They both were in the backfield before he could get set and get ready 
to find a receiver or even attempt to find one. Yeah, you hate that as Thomas just didn't have any time that time in the pocket. And now he's got a third and long situation where he's going to have to hope they can keep, give him some time here to make a good pass down the field and pick up a first down they desperately need. And instead, they're going to get out of his hands quickly, try a little screen pass this time to Mc Hawkins, and Hawkins is going to move backwards. Thomas' pass is complete. Yes, Stefan Kennedy was holding him, holding him up. Well, he held him up, then that was Quentin Jackson that came in and finished him off, but... Um, just could not break away from Kennedy's hold. Well, Maryville now looks like they're going to go for it here on fourth and 13. And watch for the pressure to come from Brevard. And here it comes. Thomas fires it down the field going up. And right through the right hands through. Yes. of number one T.J. Coleman. A good throw by Thomas. And that slippery football yes. going right through his hands as the conditions making things very difficult on everyone. So that's going to be giving the football now to Brevard as Maryville unable to convert on fourth down. Four minutes and eight seconds. So four minutes and eight seconds left to go here in the fourth. Brevard 14, Maryville 3. And Scott, if you're the Tornadoes, you have to – Imagine they're going to just try to run the football and just ink out this game and run the clock out. So will turn, they'll hand it off to Yoder here. Five yard gain, it's going to be second and five. And Heath, once again, the rain has joined us here at the field. So. Well, at least you've got the sun peeking through the clouds up there. That's true. It's trying, it's trying to come back. Letting that clock tick down here if you're Brevard. So Hogan will get it. He'll hand it off to Yoder again. Yoder up the middle. Gain of two. It's going to be third and three. Good stop from Maribel there as Carlton and Thomas both on the on the stop from Maribel. Looks like it is now third and four for the Tornadoes. Hands it off to Yoder. Yoder, first down. Yeah, it looks like all they're going to do is just continue to run it, just use Yoder, pound it straight up the middle, make Maryville stop them at this mm -hmm. point. Yeah, run the clock out, get out of here with a victory if you're the Tornadoes. But like we talked about before, this field's wet, anything could happen. So, you know, we still, still got time if we need, need it, but we're really going to be pressed for it. Logan gets a snap, turns and hands the football off. Good stop from Maribel right DJ there. The yeah, DJ Taylor on the carry this time. And they'll sub him in for Yoder. Nothing doing. It's going to be second and ten. Hogan hands it off. Losing a few more that time. It was a good stop by the defense. Anticipating it, the bounce out to the right and bringing down DJ Taylor again. Now it's going to be third and around 13. Well, Heath, and the fumble we wanted to occur, but he fumbled it out of bounds. So. 
Not exactly what we were hoping for. Right. But almost. Hogan will turn. Hogan will hand it off up the middle. Another running back in the game is Aaron Bennett with the carry. The junior running back from Gastonia, North Carolina. Gets it, and it's going to now be fourth and nine. Yeah, Heath Bennett had a good first half. He led Brevard with... Five carries for 24 yards, and it looks like we have reached the end of the game. Now they're getting everybody lined up, and that will do it, Scott. Your final score here at Honaker Field at Miraville College, Brevard 14, Maryville College 3. Certainly not the outcome you wanted for the first home game for Maryville, but here's the thing, Scott. Maryville hasn't been home since November of 2019. 504 days wow. since their last home game. Pretty crazy after COVID, after the weather. So many factors trying to prevent this ball game from coming to a conclusion and getting done. But, Scott, no matter what, they were able to get back out here. They were able to get better. They were able to learn and grow and get, just get back on the field. And that's got to feel good for these young kids. And you're excited for them as the future looks bright. And you've got a talented young coach and head coach, Ben Fox, who is excited to really get this program heading in the direction he wants it to go in. So you wish him the best. But I think more than all, you're just grateful that they had an opportunity to get back out here and play today. All right, Heath. You know, just being able to get out, play some football, something that was taken away from them in the fall because of the um, COVID pandemic and so forth. But being able to get back out just to be able to play, I mean, more than anything else, that's the enjoyment of it. But, you know, they got to both teams here, Brevard and Maribel, got to come out and have a good game. They're going to get an opportunity here pretty soon. Um, like you said, just to kind of learn, they're learning a new system. You know, mm -hmm. a new coach comes in, new system comes in. A great time to get some experience because you're getting game time experience instead of just practice, practice, practice. So you get a lot of game time experience to learn this. And then come fall, you know, it's going to be different. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just a few months ago, you know, got a new head football coach and you had to kind of relearn some things and build from the ground up. And, uh, Coach Fox mentioned it in his opening presser when he got interviewed via Zoom. He said, you know, this is – I'm inheriting a young football team. I've got a, a team that's only got 20 juniors and seniors combined on the roster. So a lot of young talent, which is exciting for the future, but there's going to be some growing pains along the way. Right, so. and, this, and this young talent that's mm -hmm. out here playing now, these three or four games that they're going to be able to play this – basically is almost going to be like they're going to be sophomores or juniors by mm -hmm. the fall. Yeah, a lot to learn for these young men and they're, some of their maybe first taste of what this feels like. And uh, Scott, they, they get to learn, they get to grow, kind of an extended spring practice, which can be very beneficial for the growth of a young football team. And uh, now an opportunity for a lot of these seniors to figure out if they're going to be able to come back and play for another year coming into the fall season. And a lot of other talent coming in. And, and also one thing to, to factor in is you're going to have a lot of familiar faces, but you're going to have some new ones because we're going to have some freshmen right. that are graduating this spring that will be coming in next year to the college level, that'll be coming in under this new regime as well. So some more talent being infused into this lineup, a long way to go, and a lot to learn, but uh, uh, very exciting times for Maryville. Right, exactly. And getting to just, again, play, and this is, a, you know, this game here, Heath, basically, as you said, a learning experience, but also a difficult game to play regardless of what side of the field you're on, because of the conditions. The mm -hmm. field conditions, the weather conditions just weren't, you know, what we call ideal for a good football game. Yesterday was great, but they played it today, not yesterday. Absolutely. And, Scott, I just got word that this extended spring practice we just talked about is not over yet, as Maryville will play next Friday at 3 p.m. here at Honaker Field against Averett. 
Oh, nice. I'm so, looking forward to that. So another opportunity for the Scots to get better and grow, and, and the coach has got a lot of film to work on between now and then. I, you saw a lot of great things from this defense, and you've got some things to clean up offensively, but there's no better person to do it than a coach who's offensive-minded and knows a lot about it, and a former quarterback to as well to help his young quarterback grow as well. So it was a – Great opportunity to be back on the field. We appreciate everyone tuning in to the Scots Broadcasting Network. We hope you enjoyed it. Sorry for all the delays, but hopefully uh, the weather will cooperate next Friday. But thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Heath Dunkel alongside Scott Dunkel. Your final score, Brevard 14, Maryville 3. Until next Friday, we say so long, good night. And, yes, that just happened. <laughs>